Welcome back to a brand new episode of Sam Talks Nerdy. Or if you're new here, hi, what's up? Welcome. I hope you're happy, doing well, dominating life, crushing it, kicking ass, taking names, the usual stuff. It is that time of the month again. It is time for the monthly wrap up. It is a monthly segment where I go back and look at the news posted on my Instagram at Sam Talks Nerdy during the during a previous month. So for this installment, we'll be taking a look at the news during the month of August. And quite a bit to talk about, so without any further delay, let's get into it. Also, for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, how do I like my new setup? It's currently a work in progress. You know, I need to get something on the uh, back wall mount there, but it's coming along quite nicely. You know, there's still some things I kind of want to improve on. Maybe try and work on the positioning of my camera a little bit, because it's, it's 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 now from the side and not from the usual angle like I like I usually like to do it. So. You know, I'm just kind of playing around with it, see what I like, see what I don't like. So, you know, if you have any thoughts, comments, ideas, share them. There was a brief sting where it was believed that Gal Gadot will be back as one woman in the DCU, but but James Gunn did debunk it a few weeks later. And I already talked about this briefly during, during a short where, I mean, I'm open to the idea of her coming back as Wonder Woman, but then again, it just fuels the fire of... Okay, is this a reboot, half reboot, not reboot? What's going on here? Because, I mean, let's be real. It's kind of BS if they bring back her, but they recast Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck. Because So, if, if we're getting a new Batman, Superman, we need a new Wonder Woman. When it comes to an actress I want to see take over the mantle of Wonder Woman, I don't really have a lot in mind. I mean, well, from I uh, maybe one I have is uh, is Alexandra Daddario. You know, she's a really popular fan cast, and I, and I think she will look awesome in the role. But maybe someone a bit more closer in age to David Cornsweet. Maybe that's a really good question. I think another fan cast I had, which was in one of my old reels, was Eliza Gonzalez. I think she could also be a good idea. We have a lot of news for the Fantastic Four MCU film. And some of it I did cover in a short, so I will probably quickly breeze through all that. But first up, it is reported that Adam Driver did turn down the role of Reed Richards because he just couldn't really connect to the role. But apparently they have a new script, so once the strike ends, they will send him that script to see if he will do it in with that one but if he does and apparently they been talking to matt smith which honestly is kind of a better casting in my opinion though i i am open to the idea of adam driver then obviously I talked about how it's been rumored that 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 that, that, that in a short i mentioned that Vanessa kirby has been talks to play sue storm apparently that is a done deal even moss is in talks for a unknown role but it could range from anything from silver surfer any of the heralds of galactus the thing any of which she can play there i could probably see him more as like silver surfer or the thing and then there's joseph quinn who was rumored to be the human torch and then of course antonio banderas as galactus really interesting cast but one i am definitely open to seeing because Oh, it just seems very unique, and I don't know. I think I think a lot of them could do a really good job, though I'm not really real familiar with Joseph Quinn, but, I mean, he has to look at Johnny Storm, so... But even Moss, he definitely... I get Thing energy from him. Of, I think he could really pull off, you know, the huge rock monster, and then Antonio Manderas. I don't know, it's going to be weird, like, seeing him play Galactus or hearing Galactus talk with his voice, and then just imagining, like, Puss in Boots or Zorro, but... Who knows, maybe he could pull it off. We have a lot of reports and rumors for Deadpool 3. First up, it appears that Emma Corrin will play Cassandra Nova, Professor X's evil sister. And according to some other YouTubers and leakers, this dates all the way back to some old rumors and reports. So this could be the case. And I definitely do, I, I definitely can see this being the villain of Deadpool 3. Thanks to Diz Insider, we have a lot of reports for Deadpool 3. For one, Daphne Keene could be back as X-23. For two, we could see Taron Edgerton as a Wolverine variant, which this could just be another whole John Krasinski Fantastic Four fan service thing. Three, we could see Julian McCohen back as Doctor Doom, the best live-action Doctor Doom as of now. Four, we could see Taylor Swift as Dazzler, and that is completely out of left field. I mean, yeah, she can be Dazzler, but I, I, don't, I don't know, just... It's weird. Like, I recall maybe hearing some rumors about this way back during, like, Apocalypse or something like that, but 
Uh, I don't know. I, I can't. I can't. I can't even remember yesterday. And lastly, we could see Tom Hiddleston appear as a Loki variant, which obviously this that could tie in Temple Three to the MCU and get some of that cohesion going. According to both my time to shine hello and can we get some toast? We will see Ghost Rider sooner than we think in the MCU. And it could be in Deadpool 3 and it could be played by Nicolas Cage. I really hope this is true because I love the first Ghost Rider film. I love Nick Cage. And I really want him in another superhero franchise, either DCU as a Spectre or somewhere in the MCU. And, and just give him one final hurrah as Ghost Rider would be awesome just i really hope this happens i love nick cage and i want to see him one more time as ghost rider going up against deadpool also according to my time to shine hello we could see hugh jackman in avengers secret wars honestly when it comes to all these reports of who's going to be in secret wars i wouldn't put too much stock in them because i mean look at what happened with multiverse of madness they were all like oh yeah we're gonna see nick cage ghost rider we're gonna see tom cruise iron man we're gonna see Michael Fassbender, Magneto, and we're going to see this guy from that movie and that girl from that movie. And then we just got One Planet, John Krasinski, Anson Mount, Haley, Haley Atwell, Chill Will Lead You For, Professor, Pro- Professor X, Monica Rambeau, and they all die. So honestly, I would take these rumors with a grain of salt and just kind of see what happens. For all I know, they could pack this film with every single character that has been in a Marvel movie over the past X amount of years, all the way back to the early 2000s. If they do that, oh wow, that's going to be quite intense. We got a plot rumor for Doctor Strange 3, which I already talked about briefly in a YouTube short, but to recap, according to my Cosmic Circus, the plot of of Doctor Strange 3 will follow the Time Runs Out story arc, which led right into Secret Wars 2015. And so, obviously, if... This report is true, then Doctor Strange 3 will lead right into Avengers King Dynasty and Secret Wars. Which, by the way, I'm really excited for. I just want a good Doctor Strange film, and I am open to the idea of it leading into King Dynasty and Secret Wars, and I also kind of see how they how they would pull that off. Apparently, Angel Manusato wanted to do a Bane solo film and even pitched it to WB, but instead got Blue Beetle. This is apparently due to the fact that Matt Reeves has plans for Bane, which more on Matt Reeves here in a little bit. Honestly, when it comes to Bane and the Matt Reeves films, I kind of like this idea because, I mean, yeah, we already got the whole Nightfall story arc and The Dark Knight Rises, but I think Matt Reeves can do just a more condensed, more, you know, just do a movie centered around the whole Nightfall story arc where instead of it not being Nightfall and No Man's Land, it's just nightfall and actually thought of this cool little mini plot rough idea for a plot where maybe in one of the films you know when they bring in bane it can end with bane breaking batman's back and then so he's you know laid up trying to get healed and then they can bring in as real to go up to manual batman you know do that whole stint like it was in the comics maybe do a little series on hbo max limited series one season series whatever then in the next batman film that can be about batman or about bruce wayne getting back into the swing of things and taking the mantle back from asriel because if i recall i haven't read nightfall but i, I think asriel kind of goes a bit too far so i, I can't see it as you know bruce sees asriel kind of going a bit hard on some criminals and he's like okay you're done i'm gonna Take back the mantle and you can go back to wherever you came from. I think this was debunked, but I'll, I'll just talk about it briefly real quick. But according to the Thor Love and Thunder official book, Thor 5 will be happening and Taika Waititi will be back to direct. Now, I am open to another Thor film because they are fun. You know, Thor Dark, Dark World is my favorite of, of the Thor films, but I have one condition. It needs to be dark. Like, maybe the same tone of Thor Dark World, because I just love that blend of sci-fi and fantasy. And also, if they're going to bring in Hercules to be the main villain, or one of the villains of Thor 5, then... I want I want the fights between him and Thor to be brutal. Like, God of War, Ragnarok, brutal. Like, literally take the fights between Kratos and Thor, and have it be between Thor 
and Hercules. Just nasty. You can feel every punch drawn out, throwing each other through buildings and walls and environments. Just nasty. Make their fights nasty. Apparently, the Chris McKay Nightwing film is officially dead, and I thought it was already dead because, I mean, how often did we hear an update on that film? It was like maybe once a year, every two years, where we would get a, oh, yeah, it's on the table, but, you know, we're just kind of waiting to see things out, see what happens. This may, maybe, maybe it was a few months ago where he was like, I am, I'm confident that this could happen in the DCU. Well, guess not. But that doesn't mean we won't get a Nightwing project in the DCU, which probably won't be Chris McKay's version. Or who knows, maybe for all I know, they, he could still do a Nightwing film, just be, it be rewritten to fit into the DCU. I can also see a Nightwing limited series working pretty well. I mean, I love Nightwing, but I just don't really think he has a... Well, actually, maybe he does. I don't know, like, I think a limited series could work, but maybe he could hold his own TV show, but then again, he was in Titan, so... Okay, either a limited series or a set of movies. Either way, I'll watch it. I actually scooch up a little bit because I'm trying to get I'm I'm trying to get well well lit here. According to Angel Manuel Sato, apparently a Green Lantern made a cameo in Blue Beetle during the opening credits, to where we see all the scarabs going throughout the galaxy, and then the blue wing gets hit by a green light. Well apparently that was a Green Lantern. Which Green Lantern it was, I have no idea, but I doubt it was Hal Jordan, John Stewart, Alan Scott, Guy Garner, because the Scarab came to Earth way before any of them even were born, conceived, existed. So it was probably just some no-name Green Lantern, that's how it was in the comics. According to My Time to Shine Hello, which I really need to get their sources because... I mean, just think about the edge I would have. Both Jeff Loveness and Michael Waldron have been removed from Kang Dynasty and Adventure Secret Wars, i.e. they are no longer attached. I believe Jeff Loveness was already, yeah, but Michael Waldron is a new addition. And this just proves that Marvel is listening to us. They're, they're seeing our feedback of the previous films, and they're like, oh, they didn't really like... Quantum Mania, so maybe we we shouldn't have Jeff Loveness write a you know huge crossover film. And honestly, when it comes to who I think should replace those two, two people come to mind: Phil Lord, Chris Miller, the guys behind the Spider Verse films. Just look at what they accomplished in Across the Spider Verse. Just they managed to perfectly handle the multiverse with visiting a good amount of planets, a lot of cameos. Just, I think they would be the right people to make King Dynasty and Secret Wars. Or they could bring back the Russo Brothers because I see a lot of people just being all, bring back the Russo Brothers, they were awesome. And yes, they were awesome, but are they awesome enough to handle two films that deal with the multiverse? Just think about that. Think about that. Think about that. At a recent convention, Giancarlo Esposito shared that prior to the strikes, he met with James Gunn about being in the DCU. He also mentioned that he wants to play a hero instead of a villain, which is really weird to think about. With everything I've seen him in, he's always the villain, and I mean, come on, he's such a good villain actor, just, it'll be weird to see him play a hero. But with that said, there are some heroes I think he could play in the DCU. For one, Phantom Stranger. I think that could be a really cool character for him. Two, the Spectre. Same idea. Or I've seen a lot of Martian Manhunter, which I don't know. I I think that's a chill we'll eat each of four, but yeah, I think he could do it. Or maybe just do like Lucius Fox. I think that would be a really cool character from the play, especially if he's going to be working for a slightly older Batman. When it comes to villains, oh boy, there are a lot. Lux Luthor. Brainiac, General Zod, Brutal Mannheim could be interesting, Scarecrow, Hugo Strange, just honestly, the list can go on and on and on of villains he could play. According to my time shine hello, which if they are watching, please share your sources, sharing is caring. According to them, the Batman Part 2 will start filming in March of next year, and the villain will be Clayface. Now, the Clayface news isn't really all that new or special. It was reported a few months ago. Now, I don't want Mr. Freeze as a villain of the Batman Part 2. I think he would be awesome, but 
I am not opposed to Clayface. I think he will make for a good whodunit murder mystery villain. But my question is, which version will it be? Will it be the classic Basil Carlo version, where it's just a guy with a clay mask called Venom, Venom of, of, of the Upper Vibe, murdering play actors? Or will it be the version I want, which is the hulking clay monster, which can morph into anything? Now, I know the monster version might be too fantastical for the guy to take on Batman, but... Just, I think that's what we all want. That's what I want. I think it will look really cool on the big screen. And I am still sticking to my fan casting of Brendan Fraser as Clayface because I just like the, the whole commentary of kind of what he went through as an actor getting blacklisted and all that. I just think it would work really well for his portrayal of Clayface. My Time Shine Hello also mentions that we could see Robin, the Dick Grayson Robin, in the Batman Part 2. And I think this kind of does line up with what was reported of how James Gunn and Matt Reeves sat down and talked things out and kind of made sure that their films wouldn't collide. So, for example, while the DCU will have Damian Wayne as Robin and Dick Grayson already as Nightwing... You know, so the Robin Mantle has already been going, and the Matt Reeves films will see the beginning of Robin and the Robin Mantle, which I think can work out. Plus, I do like, uh, plus, this could mean we could see Batman sort of light up a little bit in the Matt Reeves films to where he takes on a young ward and becomes less brutal, less angry, and just, you know, the Batman we like to see in his later years. That's it for the main news. Let's take a look at the stories and see what's new there. This should come to no surprise to anybody, but Spider-Man Beyond Spider-Verse has been delayed indefinitely. Not surprised, because, I mean, look at how long it took us to get across the Spider-Verse, so this could take a while. The director of The Incredible Hulk shared that if the film got a sequel, we would have seen the Grey Hulk and multiple Red Hulks. Am I the only one who actually liked The Incredible Hulk movie? I, it's not that bad to me. But someone posted a picture of her rocking some of that Spider-Verse Gwen Stacy style hair, and she is rocking it. And I really hope this means that we will see her in Beyond Spider-Verse as a Gwen Stacy variant, either in animation or live action. Hopefully live action. A new rumor for Superman Legacy suggests that Queen Bee will have a role in the film. And lastly, and this is really cool, but we're getting another Batman 89 comic. And we have one with Two-Face, but now we're going to get one that is seemingly adapting the Batman Triumphant script or story where it's going to have... Scarecrow, Harley Quinn, and I am all for that because I love the Timur Batman films. I'm happy to see them continue on in a comic. And apparently Scarecrow will be based off Jeff Goldblum, which I think was a rumored ideal casting back in the day. Though honestly, I was kind of wanting Nick Cage. And that is it for this episode of Sam Talks Nerdy. Thank you for watching or listening if you're listening to this via my podcast. If you are, please make sure to leave a five-star rating and a good review where you can, because that helps get my podcast out there for to listen to. Also, feel free to follow me on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Those will be linked down in my description, and I will try to pin them in the comments as well. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, the, the usual ordeal. And until next time, stay up, stay well, stay healthy, be kind and loving. Be cool, stay in school, don't do anything illegal. If you go to jail, establish dot dominance quickly. And I will see you or talk to you next time. Peace out.